Look, I, I think we're back into a point for a phase where you're looking at top level trends. Um, I don't, I think we've been in a phase for a while where it's picking companies, you know, this sort of thing. But I think the macro risks, especially around China and Europe are so large that I think you have to factor that into decisions that you're making. And the individual company level decisions are important, but I think we're, we're back into a point where you have to prioritize the macro considerations. Which are what? When you're talking about you know, places like Europe, does that mean that you're sort of advocating staying away from Europe completely or being very specific in terms of those kinds of things? very specific. I, I, I mean, I think you're a bit, there are some good healthy companies there. There are some not so healthy companies there. We saw stuff that happened with Deutsche Bank earlier this week and yeah. you know, there are some real problems there, right? You have a, uh, a change happening at the ECB that we don't really know which way it's going to go yet, but it likely means a, a much more dovish approach at the ECB. So um, that can, can be good for companies that are debt straddled, but it can also present some really tough temptations for them as well. Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, and then there's the consumer debt aspect of Europe as well. So I, I think there are a number of things we need to be really careful of in Europe. The biggest um, you know, the biggest risk out there right now is China. It's so central to supply chains globally um, and more broadly Northeast Asia, so central to supply chains globally um, and they just keep tripping up month after month so, and I think it's really problematic for the world. So if that's, a, if that's a key premise of your investment strategy and you're thinking at the mm -hmm. moment, does that mean that you really like places like Vietnam? I mean, are you looking at ways to take advantage of these, these risks that, as you've just pointed out, China poses, in particular when it comes to supply chains, manufacturing? Yeah, I think that's fine, but I think Vietnam, Mexico, even places like Thailand, pl places that are substitutional to China, Vietnam's a bit stretched right now. You know, there, there, there's been so much capacity moving into Vietnam that I think um, you need to really be careful about your considerations in going to Vietnam. I, I've been saying for months, I think Mexico is the biggest opportunity. I think Mexico will benefit the most from the trade war. I think the USMCA passing, this is NAFTA 2 passing, will help Mexico in a big way. So uh, I really see Mexico as the big winner over the next 6 to 12 to 18 months okay. and that's a place that I'd be looking hard. Hi, I'm Emily Tan and thanks for watching CNBC. You can check out more of our videos by clicking on the boxes on the screen and don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more. Thanks for watching.